who's getting the last laugh now? j Dog. Well, you are. And I hate to uh, shit on a guy that's not even here to defend himself. But, <laughs> wow. I mean, when you look at the team of the owner who traded you for net, he already has Deshaun Watson. Okay? His trio of running backs could have been Le'Veon Bill, Mark Ingram, and Leonard Fournette. Great. You would love to have all three of those backs. So this move honestly makes zero sense to me. I think that he just wanted something sexy, uh, you know, trying to up his record. He's two and four. No, he's four and two. So there you go. doesn't make any sense at all when you are doing well. You're on a hot streak to give up a valuable player like Fournette. But such is life, such is fantasy football. Everyone listening out there, take note. Do not damage your team in such a way for just uh, – Do you know yeah. how many people came back at me trying to get Tyreek Hill off of me, like the guys I would try to trade with? <laughs> they would throw, like, these bullshit trades with, like, all these crappy players and, like, Tyreek Hill. And, like, want, and I'm like, no, you moron. I'm trying to improve my team, not trade you my franchise player for a bunch of your bench guys just to help you yeah. out. Like – I I was trying to be as fair and what I was trying to do and why, and really when I was going through multiple uh, players, I was really trying to look at what their roster was and what they really were poor at, even on their bench and what I had an abundance to and kind of tried to flip flop. I needed more running back depth and had an abundance of wide receivers. So I was literally trying to trade for a starting running back and a bench running back and give them these teams that I was trying to trade with needed wide receiver depth. So that's what I was trying to do and give them Mahomes. The only guy that didn't need Mahomes is the guy that traded me for a running back. And I was so surprised. I thought it was an accident and I literally didn't even have to think about it twice. I thought that's his, there's nobody out. Like there's just no way if he thought about that, that he was going to take that back and nobody else wanted to trade me a running back, and I don't have that much time left. And I just felt like another another okay week of Mahomes, I was going to get stuck with ended up having to cut him or, or end up getting stuck with those two quarterbacks the way you guys said I was. So when Fournette got offered, that was it. I wanted, it, I wanted him gone, or at least the trade to be accepted before this game tonight even at the risk of him turning the corner and having a big game and it making me look stupid, I felt in the long term the a good game tonight would have been more of a fluke than anything based on the team he's playing. So I was happy that it happened yeah. this way. Well, and he called me this morning and he said, hey, man, uh, I might oh, be so, getting Patrick. So the guy called you? That's how it started this? I was wondering why this all started. Yeah, he calls me and asked if I'd be interested in a swap Mahomes for Michael Thomas. I said, I'll have to think about it, thinking nothing of it. You know, maybe he's got something in the works, maybe he doesn't. And then before I know it, I look down and the trade has gone through. And I'm thinking, man, you really jumped the gun. I gave you no sort of promise, no guarantee, no nothing. And now you're stuck with Mahomes. I'm not trading a Michael Thomas. And already on his roster, he has Julio Jones, Julian Edelman, Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, I don't know what he's thinking other than maybe I'm going to flip this house. And now you're stuck with a torn meniscus, dislocated meniscus Mahomes. <laughs> I mean, we'll call him Patrick Meniscus for the rest of the uh, season. Curse of the Madden still lives. Hey, that's totally fair. Yeah. I Look. Madden 20. Mahomes is on it. Yes, he is. He is, and that is indeed the truth there, and I forgot about <laughs> that. But I, Look, I couldn't be more ecstatic, though, honestly, Dylan, and I feel like, no, I, I know this is going to sound funny, but honestly, this is the best year of fantasy football I've had, and I think it's because I've been doing the show with you, and I literally am in tune with it, and I, you know what? I have never made so many trade requests because I would get discouraged. I literally felt like I was going to trade, try to trade him until it was just people told me to, to F off. Like, because you had said there's no point not asking. Nobody will say it. And I need, I wasn't, I was not making the playoffs at this point. Even with Montgomery, 
he I just have I don't have a running back one consistent. I have, you know, a bunch of running back two flex guys, but I just needed that solid guy, that one running back to help me make a, a possible playoff push. Boy, and so I took your advice, Dylan. I just It's I it's had, such a it's I had four guys would, I targeted and I just kept going after them. And I'd already tried here's the yeah. funny thing too. I started off two weeks ago, if you didn't notice and we didn't talk about it, I started off by trying to trade Aaron Rodgers when Mahomes was hot. And then as things flip flopped, it's like, okay, I see where this is going now. I got to get Mahomes and strike before he ends up panning out. And this basically was the last week. I would have got, I would have been stuck with him after this week. So true. The The timing is perfect. And listen, you cannot be a shy guy and win in uh, fantasy football. You can't. You can't think about, well, I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to bug so-and-so and just keep offering trades. And, you know, screw that. You got to offer as many trades as you can. If you have people's phone numbers in your league, text them as much as you can. Be the guy who's bugging them. Because eventually, you know what? They might just fold because they're tired of getting messages from you. So <laughs> you can end up with a trade that way. That's that's just I've solid advice there, Dylan. Just bug them till they fold. Hey Jay, you said you have Tyreek, right? Yes, I do. That's the unfortunate. He has not caught anything even from Mahomes when he before he was hurt tonight. I also have Nicole Hardman, yeah. who I picked up off waivers today uh, for nothing too. So I do have a handcuff. I mean, that's I got that, but Tyreek now goes out the window. Does because not Matt Moore the, does not have a cannon. <laughs> he does not go out the window because what they'll do is they'll adjust to doing things like they did last year with Mahomes. More bubble screens, quick slants, get the ball in his hand, jet reverses, things that do not require Matt Moore. It's just going to take a week or two to adjust. That's all. And by the way, Dave, have I not shown you one thing? If I don't like something, I'm going to try to move shit. Like, <laughs> So if I don't like this... You trust me, Tyreek Hill will be on the trade block. I will get what I feel like is equal value. I will try to get something from him, and you can laugh now. But maybe you his value laugh drops now. because Mahomes is not there. Even if his value drops, there's other players out there that their value right now is low. Where you can look at their play. Fournette, Montgomery, their their value right now isn't that low. But in weeks to come, Montgomery's value goes way up because of the defenses he has to play. Right now, he's not that great. David Montgomery? Yes. Nah. Yes, his value goes <laughs> but, up from the defenses he plays later on in the season. It was Hills, the same thing uh, with Ronald Jones and, and a bunch of guys. Hill's ceiling is definitely capped without Pat Mahomes. But I will say, if you can remember this far back, Matt Moore did have a fairly decent season throwing to Kenny Stills for the Dolphins. He and then a... Bud Dupree knocked him unconscious in the playoffs. Well, irrelevant to this season. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think he's not a quarterback that goes ooh and ah. I, I did. Absolutely not. But he and... is a guy with a history of throwing a deep ball. Tyreek Hill is a comes. is a game wrecker, and all you need to do is get his the ball in his hands. But it's true. Again, like I said, Dave, I don't sit. I am not a content fantasy football player. If this season, dude, who is the only person in this league who's made trades? All the trades have been made, have been involved with this guy. Okay. So. Have fun with it, Dave. And, you know, you're not totally screwed without Tyreek. You do have. MVS, who's looking to bounce back from injury. You do have Hollywood Brown looking to bounce back from injury. So, Shepard, you know, I have both they, help. they might sit this week. I have Tate. <laughs> well, yes, Alvin Tate, can, who's I, on the rise. I, there's nothing I can do. I, I, there's nothing I can do about this week, Dave. It is what it is. But I also right. have Fournette. I have Rodgers. I have Jones. I have Montgomery. I've got a solid team. Like, that was part of the reason why. Had No, had I not gotten Fournette, I'm screwed right now. I don't have a fallback. I Fournette's a franchise running back one, first-round player in a lot of leagues. He'll just got a catch for six yards. I'm proud of you, Jay. Yeah. Hey, <clears throat> never mind. That wasn't me. 
<laughs> Dylan, I got a question for you. Hit me. I'm stuck in a bind here. Um, I know Terry McLaurin is facing San Fran this week. Um, and DJ Chark is facing Cincinnati. I have Chark starting over. Is that the smart way? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Well, here's, <laughs> the scary Terry's been going off on everything he's faced. Here's my di- here's my dilemma. I don't know whether I play Montgomery at my flex or D.D. Westbrook because of Cincinnati. Because w- w- Montgomery is facing New Orleans. Defense, the Saints. Is solid. Yeah. But he's D. also he's also been catching the ball a lot out of the backfield too before the bye week, and they're coming off a bye, so that's my the Saints dilemma. Defense is one of the few that's well rounded. One well, of that's the what best I mean. I'm not. I'm giving even respect to the Saints defense, but at the same time, it is D.D. Westbrook. He can be hit or miss, even if it is against Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. Uh... I go personally ahead. would go with. Um, I mean, yeah, the matchup with Cincinnati is nice, and I did just, um, I did just give props to DJ Chark. But DJ Chark's been putting up, you know, some He's real wide significant receiver numbers. One. Yeah, DD Westbrook, I don't like as much. Uh, he could have a nice game, but I think you're guaranteed more of a floor with Montgomery this week. Who, you know, they clearly seem to be favoring him over Mike Davis now, finally. And yes, Ty- or Tariq is probably going to get. Most of the catches, but I'm I would feel more comfortable with Montgomery than Didi. That's kind of what I felt, and, and coming off the bye week, I thought they would have more of a package and, and something to work in with yeah. him, some new stuff. So that's, now, I do the, have, that's the way my roster set up, but I wanted to make sure I was thinking the right thing here. So that's all. Well, this is something that I asked both of you today, so I'm sure we could dive real deep into this, and I'm sure uh, fantasy players all over the world would love to know. Bad I way. asked you. I asked you guys if you would go with Jake Kumaro or Alan Lazard this week, considering Devonte Adams ruled out, Geronimo Allison more than likely out, MVS exited in the game last week with an injury. Lazard King. Same oh, for you, Jay. Yes, it's definitely Lazard. Here, like the the Kumaro thing is cooling off faster and faster of all the off season between him and Rogers. He's been on the field plenty right now and has really gotten no look. Yeah. He's dropped open. two passes too. Uh, when, so, um, and Lazard got lobbied for by the quarterback came into the game and really it was a bad ball that resulted in bad placement of where Aaron threw it, and it was allowed for – Lazard got his hands on it, but it got stripped away, and he came right back to him for that touchdown. Same throw, same I thought pattern. you were saying the touchdown pass was a bad pass. No, no, I'm no, like, no, no, excuse no. The, me? The one prior to that where it got stripped away was yes, a little short I agree and that. low, and Lazard still had his hands on it, made a beautiful play, and it got – and so the QB, it, even though it's a young player that, he, you know, he could have – What's said about him, he should have like, oh, gee, see, you dropped the ball, dumb, dumb young kid. But what did he do? No, this is a guy he thought lob- he lobbied for, and he felt he took the blame on himself. He went right back to him. and he It was just like Adams beautiful... in 2017 in Dallas. I was just going to say that. It was almost and, – and watching the game, I got that feeling because it, Lazard made a good play on the ball, and it was an errant throw. I had that feeling going right before that touchdown pass got thrown that this is that's the thought I had, Dave, exactly that. This is the Dallas and, uh, you know, Adams where he throws the fade and he throws it two straight line. It gets tipped and, and he goes, throw it again. And they throw it again. He puts it again in a game winning touchdown. And it was almost exactly like that, except for this time he throws it over and drops it in the bucket. Lazard. It was is, right after that first legitimate hands to the face yep. penalty. Lazard is six, just just under six five, and can fly, and definitely has the quarterback's trust. Um, I and he would, has built too. He's yes, not just slender. He's built. He's built. He's a big boy. He's look. Anytime you have a young receiver, Dylan playing with. The clean classroom is the beginning. What comes next is I like that ad. What, what is the hell is that? Aggressive. Don't worry about it. That's, that's Dylan something. 
I'm just saying, whatever. <laughs> blessings on his wall. I don't Cialis, know you get are, your doctor's prescription. It's a butt wipes and. <laughs> <laughs>